Hello, and a very warm welcome to this webinar, Kickstart 2013, Your Blueprint to Email Marketing Success. My name is Murray Cowell, and for those of you who don't know me, I thought it'd be useful to give you a little bit of background about who I am and why I'm running this webinar. I run two companies in the email marketing business. There's Belmont Mail and Inbox Income. Belmont Mail celebrates its fifth anniversary this year. We've been supplying an excellent system for sending email campaigns since 2008. And we also provide outsourced email marketing services for customers who want results without getting involved in the campaign. So we run the campaigns on their behalf. But what I've come to understand is that people are not just looking for a good quality email marketing system. And what I mean by that is the software that you use to actually send out the emails. It's not the system that people are looking for. And if you're like most people in business, what you want to know is how to increase the amount of new and repeat business that you can get from your email marketing campaigns, how to improve your sales, increase your profits and reduce the amount of effort and the amount of work that's involved in delivering those results. And having the best system on which to do it might still be important to you, but it's not your main priority. So last year, I started a second business, Inbox Income, to provide learning resources for people like you, people who want to get better results from their email marketing. And many of these resources are free and there'll be much more to come later in the year. A lot of people that I meet want to do more email marketing, but are worried that people won't like receiving the emails or that the emails will be boring and people won't read them or that people won't respond. Some of the people that I speak to are worried that email marketing has had its day and that newer channels like social media are taking over. And so that makes them sometimes a little bit reluctant to get involved in email marketing because they're not, uh, they're not absolutely convinced that it's going to deliver the results that they're looking for. And some people even doubt that email marketing works at all. And that's usually because they don't like some of the emails that they receive. And so they think that nobody likes any marketing emails. And I haven't met anyone so far who doesn't worry about being lumped in the same category as spammers. Many people equate marketing emails with spam, but they're not the same thing. And in fact, uh, over, the, over the next few months, I want to show you how, when it's done well, ethical email marketing is the opposite of spam. Spam is sending blanket emails to large numbers of people, irrespective of whether or not they want to hear from you. Ethical email marketing is about carefully tailoring your message to the needs of your audience and carefully targeting that audience to make sure that you only send emails to people who want to hear from you and that you only write to them about things that they want to hear about. Uh, and when you do that, you'll find that nobody really complains about receiving emails for, from you. And in that sense, uh, email marketing is no different from any other form of direct marketing. And when you do it well, your audience will appreciate you for it and your sales and profits will increase. There's no doubt about that whatsoever. I, I'm going to say it again, whatever business you're in, if you do email marketing well, your sales and profits will increase. Actually, even if you do email marketing badly, your sales and profits will increase. I see people doing terrible email campaigns and getting sales from it. For example, one of my self-managing clients, and naming no names, uh, recently sent out an email that was no more than their printed newsletter converted to HTML, so converted into a, 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 an email with graphics. And it was far too long. It had about 1,300 words in it, a very small print, quite difficult to read. But they just won a five-figure national account from um, a, a very well-known UK brand on the back of that email. So you don't have to be an expert to make more sales and profit from your email marketing. But the better you get at it, the more your results will improve. And that's what this webinar is about. It's about how to make a start on improving your results. And it doesn't matter whether you're just starting out with email marketing or if you're highly experienced. Uh, one of my clients who I know has signed up to attend this webinar has been using email for his marketing for at least five years and getting some good results. But he's still interested because he knows that there'll be some good stuff here. And he's right. Let me show you what I want to uh, cover during the webinar today. So why email rules as the number one digital marketing tool? Whether or not you use social media or search marketing or banner advertising or whatever, you have to have email marketing as the foundation on which all your other online marketing depends. And I'm going to show you some facts today that explain why that is. How a small hyper-responsive list beats a large lazy list any day. 
One of the most popular and valuable assets that any business has is its list of potential and actual customers. If you haven't got a list, start building one today. And really, I mean today, not tomorrow. I hear people worrying about not having enough contacts on their list, but one of the most successful single campaigns that I ran for a client was to a list of 170 people. And that campaign generated £50,000 of inquiries in four hours. So you don't need a big list. What you do need is a quality list. So I'm going to give you a few tips and some do's and don'ts about list building. Uh, after all, the best email campaign in the world is going nowhere if you haven't got anyone to send it to. So it's really important that you um, focus on and work on building a, a, a quality list of contacts that you can send your emails to. Why software matters. Uh, the biggest mistake you can make is to use your own Outlook account or the email account that comes with your website on your own domain, send bulk emails. That will get you labeled as a spammer quicker than anything else that you can do. You can get your IP address and your domain blacklisted very, very quickly indeed. And once you're on a blacklist, it can be very difficult to get off it. So I'm gonna explain that a bit further and show you how to get the right software for the job. Now, I want to declare an interest up front at Belmont, we sell a very good system for sending commercial emails, marketing emails, which some of you may be interested in, but this seminar is not about selling you a system. Other systems are available and the Belmont system is not suitable for everyone. I want to make it clear that the topics that we're going to be covering today are relevant to anyone, whatever system you use and wherever you, wherever you are with your email marketing. You don't have to use a particular system or work in a particular way to get the benefit of this webinar. If you are interested in the Belmont system, I'll say a few words about that right at the very end of the, of the uh, webinar. Next, why eShots don't work? And by an eShot, I mean a one-off approach to email marketing, like a mail shot, you know, just sending out a single email, setting out your stall and expecting the phone to start ringing off the hook. This sort of approach can work for a very limited number of businesses in certain circumstances, and I'm gonna be explaining who it works for and why, and you'll be able to see whether or not that uh, applies to your business. And if not, why not? And if it doesn't work for your business, I'll also uh, show you how to establish a more effective approach that will work for your business, because there's several different ways of approaching your market, um, and I'm gonna show you how to identify which which method is likely to be most effective for you. How to write compelling emails. Once you've decided how you're going to approach your readers, the next question is how to write in a way that they find absolutely riveting. I'll show you how to structure your emails so that people can't resist reading on. And I'll give you three foolproof techniques for engaging your readers' interest. I'll also show you some tried and tested words that never fail to get readers to open your emails and demonstrating why creative writing is the enemy of a clear, concise approach to writing copy. It's one of the most common mistakes that people make with writing emails, is to make them too fancy. It's not what's required in order to get a result. There'll also be some tips on how to capture the attention of people who don't read your emails properly and just scan through them. Now, we've only got an hour available today, and email marketing is a very wide and a very deep topic, so we're really only going to scratch the surface today. Having said that, I've designed the content to ensure that you can get real, practical, useful insights as a result of what we're covering today, stuff that if you put it into practice will make a real measurable difference to your results. We're going to be cracking through this at a fair old rate, so you might want to have a pen and paper ready to make notes. Uh, I appreciate that some of you might find that uh, at the end of the webinar you want more. So I'm also going to mention, say, a course that's available called Hyper Responsive Email Marketing, which is ideal for those of you who want to go into this topic a little bit deeper. But I'll tell you a little bit more about that later on. I'm going to take no more than five minutes to explain who it's for, what it covers and how to join the course in case you're interested. Okay, let's get started. Uh, so the first topic is why email rules as the number one digital marketing tool. Last year, I was invited to speak at a couple of seminars. One was the Soton Digital Seminar, which was a seminar for digital marketers from the Solent region that took place in Winchester in May. And the other was the Designers and Developers Fiesta in London. Both seminars had attendees who are very advanced in the arena of digital marketing. And um, in both cases, the organizers asked me to come and speak to explain to them why anybody should still be bothering with email marketing now that email is a dying medium. 
Um, and this, this view is very widespread. Uh, after all, as recently as November 2011, Mark Zuckerberg, the founder of Facebook, pronounced email is dead. And I can't pretend that I haven't had moments of worry when I've thought, hang on a minute, uh, my kids, you know, I've got two teenage kids, they don't use email at all, ever. They only communicate using Facebook and Twitter. You know, I have to go on Facebook to tell them it's time for tea. And when their generation hits the workplace in a few years, um, isn't email just going to die? Have I backed the wrong horse, betting my house on email marketing? So I do have these, uh, these thoughts myself, and um, I decided to... Uh, look into the subject uh, in a little bit more detail to see what the what the truth was and what the the real trends are about uh, how email marketing is doing and I offered to do a presentation called video killed the radio star but will social media kill email marketing uh, now these presentations were to groups of my peers people who know as much about digital marketing as I do and in some cases maybe even more than I know. So I thought, you know, I'm going to have to really come up with something new and original here and tell them something they don't already know. So I, I started to do some research and I got into the trends in email marketing and researched several reports from different sources on the subject. And I turned up some very interesting facts, which I'd like to share with you. So for example, the number of email accounts in existence in the world today is just under 3 billion. And that's predicted to rise over the next few years to 4 billion. These predictions are being made by the companies that build the infrastructure for the internet and they're basing their investment plans on these numbers so it's not like it's Mystic Meg looking into a crystal ball and plucking figures out of the air. These are fairly reliable predictions about the growth in the number of email accounts. So just think about that. Email is over 40 years old and yet it's still predicted to grow by 30 to 40 percent in the next three years. No social media platform is expecting that sort of growth, as far as I know, apart from maybe startups. Here's another surprising fact. There are 300 times as many emails sent each day as there are Facebook posts, and 1,500 times as many emails as there are tweets. And this is without the spam. This is genuine emails. So email absolutely dwarfs every social media platform in terms of volume. Facebook, uh, the most popular social media platform, has still only achieved 62% market penetration. In the UK, that figure's in decline. It's possible that Facebook membership has already peaked. And certainly Facebook have been doing a lot of work on clearing out uh, fake accounts just recently that, uh, that reveal that the actual number of Facebook users is much lower than was previously thought. Um, it's also relevant that a third of UK consumers don't use social media at all. So not only do they not use Facebook, they don't use any social media at all. And if people who do use social media, two thirds never share anything to do with companies or promotions. 4% of people uh, follow a brand on Twitter, 45% like a business on Facebook. But look at this, 94% have signed up to at least one business email. 84% of people have signed up to at least five business emails and 39% of people have signed up to more than 10. So with figures like that, better not rely on social media alone to market your business. There's also the question of what consumers prefer. Um, and in a survey, again, of UK consumers, consumer preferences were 77% to receive marketing and promotional messages via email. So 77% of people said that they would rather uh, receive promotional messages via email than any other channel. Facebook came in with only 4%. It's behind things like direct mail and SMS text messaging. And Twitter only achieved 1%. Even among 15 to 17-year-olds who are the lowest users of email, the figures were similar. We're still looking at 66%. So two-thirds of 15 to 17-year-olds stated that their preference for receiving promotional messages was to receive it via email. Um, and... Uh, Facebook did a little better amongst this group. It was 8% and Twitter was 4%. But even so, once again, email dwarfs the any social media channel as being the preferred route for promotional messages for people of all ages. And this completely explodes the myth that people don't want to hear from businesses via email. These f figures show that they do. It's also worth mentioning that high social media use 
correlates with high email use. So in other words, people who use social media a lot also use email a lot. So at the very least, a social media campaign should be integrated with an email campaign. And it, it, yeah, there's a, a lot of benefit in uh, integrating social media and email campaigns and various different ways that you can do that. Social media is very good for starting and building relationships with prospects and customers. It's not so good for targeted and direct communications. It's also worth mentioning that people are finding their inboxes more interesting. Uh, this graph shows that in 2010, 6% of people, only 6% of people found more than half of their inbox interesting. And 60% of people found less than a tenth of their inbox interesting. By 2011, so that's just in, in one year, that it equalized to about 28% of people. So this shows that people are finding their inbox is more interesting. And that's good news for email marketers because if, if the inbox is more interesting, then people are going to spend more time there and they're going to spend pay more attention to the emails that do get through to their inboxes. And list sizes, email uh, marketing volumes, open rates and traffic are all increasing. So that means more people are signing up to emails, more marketing emails are being sent, people are opening more of the marketing emails, emails that they receive and as a result more traffic is going through to websites from email marketing than ever before. So what this is all telling us is that email marketing is absolutely fundamental to any kind of online marketing. It's popular with consumers and it gets results. If you think about it, whatever you do in online marketing depends on email. You make contact with somebody via Facebook or Twitter, now what? Sure, some businesses can sell direct on Facebook, but you're relying on people coming to your Facebook page to do that. You can get your website found in search engines, but what if people find it but don't purchase straight away? Better make sure that you're capturing their details so you can email them later. So email rules in this respect because it's a universal non-proprietary protocol. And that means that nobody owns it and anybody can use it. And that's quite important because you can't say that for any social media uh, platform. Email is growing and will continue to do so. And email marketing is the most fundamentally important tool for digital marketing. Who says so? Consumers of all ages, because they prefer email for marketing communications. And consumer tolerance to well-designed email marketing is improving. As a result, more people are signing up to emails than ever before. And open rates and click-through rates are at a record high. So email marketing is booming. And there's never been a better time to do email marketing. It's the most cost-effective form of marketing available. And the Direct Marketing Association has estimated that the return on investment is 44 to 1. So that means that on average, for every pound spent on email marketing, there's a return of 44 pounds. And obviously, that's an average. So not everybody will get that kind of a return. But I have clients who get many times higher than this. One campaign that ran at the end of last year is on track to return 700 times what the client spent on it. And pretty much anybody can make a positive return on investment in email marketing because it's so cheap to do it. If you spend 100 quid a month on it, you can expect to return that investment many times over. Okay, so let's move on to the next topic. As I mentioned earlier, the best email campaign is worth nothing if you've got nobody to send it to. So this section is about list building. There's a saying that you might have heard that the money's in the list, but that isn't all there is to it. It's absolutely vital that you have not just any old list, but a list of qualified prospects. What do I mean by that? Well, a qualified prospect is somebody that you know is likely to be interested in your products and services and fits the profile of the sort of customer that you want to be doing business with. Now, if you're in an obscure market like, um, I don't know, ma manufacturing pumps for marine engines, for example, it's pretty easy to be very specific about who you're targeting. But it may be that you have a generic service like maybe an accountant or a hairdresser where there's a very wide range of people who might be potential customers. Uh, you know, anybody with a business, anybody with hair. Uh, the problem here is that if you try to appeal to everybody, you risk appealing to nobody. Uh, so it's important to be really, really specific about who you want to do business with. On a future webinar, I'll be covering in more detail how you can identify your perfect prospect and how you can use your email marketing to filter your list until you have a highly responsive list of ideal prospects. For now, however, it's enough to know that you have to have a list. It doesn't need to be a big list. As I mentioned earlier, I ran a very successful campaign from a very small list. 
And it, so it's not about having big numbers. You can generate good quality business and profits from a small list of responsive prospects. And that's better than a large list of people who aren't interested in what you've got to offer. And that's why these cheap generic business lists are often a waste of money. You might have seen them on offer, you know, uh, £500 for half a million email addresses. Don't be tempted by these lists. They may seem attractive, but the data is usually out of date. The people on the list have been inundated with emails and have often abandoned the email address or will report you for spamming if you email them. Sometimes the lists have been gathered illegally, so you can get into a lot of trouble emailing them. And very often they have what are known as spam traps in them. And spam traps are uh, fake email addresses that, that internet service providers put out into the wider world to try and trap spammers. And if you email one of those spam traps, your uh, sending reputation is likely to suffer very, very quickly and you'll get blacklisted and labelled as a spammer. Uh, it is possible to succeed with a purchase list, but it's quite specialist. And this is something else that I'll cover on a later webinar. Or you need to really you need to use the services of a specialist to get a result uh, rather than trying to do it yourself. Um, and an organic owned list that you've built yourself is many, many times more valuable than a purchased list. So as I said at the start of the webinar, if you haven't got a list, start, start building one today. You can start off with your own list of business contacts and you know, make sure that you uh, include them in your email campaigns. And I say that because uh, one of my clients said, uh, oh no, I couldn't possibly email people who know me. Um, as if sending out an email that uh, that lets people know what you can do for them is some kind of an imposition. Uh, and, you know, in, in her thinking, she was thinking that emailing people would annoy them. Um, but actually, I find that I get uh, some very good responses from um, people that I know. So start off with your own list of business contacts and people that you've maybe met through business transactions or through networking uh, or as your customers. And then every time you have any kind of contact with a new prospect, make sure that you get their email address. Every time you meet someone, get their business card and then put it in your system. If you go to a networking meeting, make it your objective to collect as many relevant business cards as you can. And I'm emphasizing the word relevant. There's no point collecting business cards from people who've got no need or, and no interest in your services. So relevant business cards. And every time you speak to someone on the phone, get their email address if you can, if they're a relevant prospect. And if you have premises like a shop or garage, then find a reason to encourage people to give you their email address. Um, I find it incredible uh, if I sign into a hotel, you know, sometimes I've signed into a hotel and they haven't asked me for, for my email address. And it's just, you know, such a waste to let um, potential business slip through your fingers like that so find a reason why people should be willing to give you their email address and uh, if you've got a shop or a garage or a hotel or a restaurant or a pub or something like that things like exclusive discounts or competitions can be very effective um, and your Facebook page should have a sign up form on it where people can sign up to your uh, email list and also there should be a reason why they should be interested in signing up to your email list. Likewise, your website needs a prominent sign-up form. And again, you can offer incentives for people to sign up, like a report or some kind of offer or discount, or even a free webinar. It's a mistake to think that your website is there to make sales. Hardly anybody buys first time after visiting a website. A much higher proportion of people will sign up for something of perceived value, even if it's their first visit to your website. Your website is there to gather leads. Your social media programs are also an excellent way to gather leads, much better at generating leads than generating sales. The sale is made through email marketing. And there have been numerous studies that show that it takes several contacts with a new prospect before they start considering doing business with you. So make a note of this. Think about how to generate more leads and how to build your list. What ideas can you come up with to get more of your target prospects to give you their email address? Start building your list now and never stop. A good quality list of qualified prospects is one of the most valuable assets that your business can have. So the next topic, which system to use? Um, and I just want to mention the software that you use for email marketing. 
Some of you may have seen my recent video blog post about spam filters. If you didn't, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here because we haven't got time. But you can go and see it after this webinar at www.inboxincome.co.uk forward slash delivery. It's only five minutes long and it explains this in a bit more detail. But to cut a long story short, you'll get blacklisted really fast if you try to use your own email system like Outlook or Hotmail or your own email account on your website for sending bulk marketing emails. And since I did that blog post, I've discovered something even more interesting. I was on a webinar myself last week run by a company called Return Path, who are one of the leading companies in email analytics. And I borrowed one of their slides, which shows how your sender score correlates with delivery rates. So sender score, what sender score is, is every domain that sends emails and every server has a reputation measure called a sender score. Uh, there, there isn't enough time today to show you how to find out your sender score, but if you're sending your own emails through your own system, the chances are that your sender score will be quite low. And ISPs use sender score uh, as a measure of whether or not, as one of the factors they use to decide whether or not an email should be delivered. And this slide shows how your sender score affects your deliverability. So if you've got a sender score, score of say 70 your deliverability is going to be around about 67 68 percent so if you switch to a commercial provider with a sender score of 99 which is what belmont has your deliverability will rocket to 95 percent and that one change means that you're getting 40 percent more emails delivered and 40 percent more emails delivered means 40 percent more business just like that so spam filters exist to prevent unauthorized servers from sending bulk emails and sender score is one of the most influential factors that determines deliverability. So it's really important that you use a commercial third party system to send your marketing emails. Uh, now I appreciate that some of you will already be using a third party system so I'll leave it until the end of the webinar to mention how you can get started with the Belmont mail system if you're not already uh, using a, another system. Um, so if you're not using another system or if you want to try out the Belmont system, you can st stay on for that bit if you want. And I'll show you how you can sign up for a free trial. But this webinar, as I mentioned earlier, is not about selling you a particular system. Uh, th there are lots of systems available and it's worth doing a bit of research to make sure that the one you've got is the one that's, that's best for you. But the important thing to note is that you absolutely must use a proper commercial service. Don't get yourself blacklisted by trying to run email marketing campaigns through your Outlook account. And if you've already been doing that and you're worried that you might have a low sender score or might be blacklisted, then get in touch and I'll explain what you can do about it. My contact details will be at the end of the webinar. Next, I want to talk about your approach to your email marketing campaigns. And so I'm calling this section why eShots don't work. And that might seem like a bit of an odd thing for an email marketer like me to say, but what I'm really referring to here is that I see a lot of people who just send out one-off emails, which are sometimes called eShots, like mail shots, but electronically. And this approach is almost always doomed to failure. Many people make this mistake. They send out random one-off emails, they don't get any results, and then they conclude that email marketing doesn't work. And as we've already established, uh, it, that it does, they then miss out on bucket loads of new business because they abandon it. Earlier on, I spoke about the phrase, the money's in the list. And actually, that's not where the money is, except in a few very rare cases. The money is in the relationship with the names on the list. You can't expect somebody to buy from you when there's no relationship between you and them. And your readers are in different states of readiness to enter into uh, a commercial relationship with you. When you understand what these states of readiness are, you can begin to write according to their expecta expectations and needs uh, in the particular state of readiness that they're in. And this will bring you much greater success. It's a little bit like dating, to use an analogy. Sending a one-shot email is like going into a bar and shouting, Are there any attractive women in here? I'm a man and I have lots of experience with attractive women. I'll nail my phone number to this notice board and if you want a man, then you can give me a call and then turning around and walking out. And that sounds ridiculous, but it's not that different to a lot of the email campaigns that I see being sent. People just talk about themselves and their goods and services and their products without much thought about who the reader is and what they might be thinking. 
So this one-shot approach is rarely successful. The important thing to understand is that the approach you take should depend on how much your reader knows about you and your product. The better they know you, the more likely they are to trust you and the more direct you can be. And again, it's the same with dating, which is why the question, fancy a quickie, is more likely to be successful with your partner of 10 years than it would be with a complete stranger. Actually, if your reader is in a high state of readiness, they may well respond to the direct approach. So there are six stages of readiness and six approaches that match each stage. So what are they? At the extreme of readiness are people who are ready to buy and these are people who will respond to a direct approach. For these people, you can make a straight offer or a promise. For example, I quite often get emails from the online retailer Ocado, which say, any four beers or ciders for six pounds. Now, I'm usually ready for a beer and I know Ocado very well. I'm very familiar with the products, maybe a little bit too familiar even. And I know that six pounds for four beers is a good deal. So I usually respond instantaneously to this offer, often without even opening the email. So if you've got a product or a service that's very well understood by your prospects, such as printing or clothes, you can be successful with the direct approach. But if you consider my client, Ben, he sells sewage systems and water processing plants. So it's very unlikely that he would get much success if his email said 10% off if you buy a sewage system at the, by the end of the month. Nobody's going to suddenly buy a sewage system because they get an email offering them 10% off. So his prospects tend to be right at the other extreme. They typically know very little about the subject and they may not even know Ben's business particularly well. Very few of them are in a high state of readiness. They may even be sceptical about what he can do. Why should they even be slightly interested in his emails if all he's doing is making offers? So a much less direct approach is called for here. In fact, an indirect approach is called for. So that Ben can keep building the relationship that he has with his clients and establishing his credibility so that when they are ready, he's the person that they think of. In order to make his emails interesting, Ben often uses stories. He writes about unusual projects that his firm has done or new developments that have taken place in the industry. By the way, when Ben started taking this approach, he experienced a five-fold increase in the response, click-through response rate to his emails, and he's landed several five- and six-figure projects from clients who are ready to buy and have read his emails and, and have thought of him because they've become regular readers of what he writes. So let's have a look at what uh, the other states of readiness are. People who are slightly more curious may respond to prediction. For example, a successful campaign to retailers asks the question, who's expecting double digit growth next year? And the answer to that is online retailers who've experienced double digit growth for several years in a row. Very few offline retailers can say the same thing. Mostly they're dealing with single digit growth or even in some cases, no growth at all, or as we've seen uh, over the, the recent period, some serious decline in sales. So the idea of double digit growth is very, very attractive. And this approach works well when your prospects are already starting to wonder how to solve their problem. So they've already realized they've got a problem and they're beginning to look for solutions. As your prospects become more open to ideas, you can become increasingly direct. So you can demonstrate that you know a secret or have developed a system that solves your reader's problem. An example of this was an email that I received from the direct marketing legends Drayton Bird, from whom I've had the privilege of learning my trade for several years now. And the title of this email was Billionaire Reveals Success Secrets. And it was an interview with a man called Peter Hargreaves, who is the founder of the financial services company Hargreaves Lansdowne in Bristol. And during the interview, he explained how he built his entire business from scratch using mainly direct marketing as his, as his main marketing method. So the point is that when people are open to ideas about how to solve a problem, they're likely to be receptive to hearing about how someone else has solved the same problem. In other words, if you are interested in how to build a business using direct marketing, then hearing the secrets of how somebody else did it uh, is, is likely to be quite appealing. Um, and But in order to be interested in that, you must already be open to the idea that somebody else has got the expertise that you haven't. If the problem's a bit more serious and immediate, your prospect may be feeling stuck. 
and in this case you can refer explicitly to their problem and offer a solution. A few years ago I ran uh, an email marketing campaign for a guy called Jim who ran a garage specialising in servicing for the VW and Audi group in Eastleigh near Southampton. Jim reckoned that he could undercut dealership prices for maintenance by about 50% for most people. So we ran a campaign that went, Audi drivers fed up with high servicing costs, save 50% on dealership prices with our maintenance plans. This campaign was very successful indeed, especially as the VW Audi group includes Porsche. And as a result of the campaign, the local Porsche owners club got in touch and started having their meetings at Jim's garage. So he got some very lucrative business from that. And notice that this campaign succeeded, even though the prospects didn't know Jim and didn't know about his garage. They were, however, very familiar with the problem. They knew that dealerships charged them a fortune, but they didn't know where else to go, where they could get high quality servicing for less. When your prospects are actively searching for a solution, an invitation often works well. After meeting a business coach called Tim at a networking meeting, I received an email from him that said, join us for coffee, Danish and a free seminar. I didn't know Tim very well, I'd only met him once but I knew that I wanted to change my business coach. So off I went and three years later, I'm still going to Tim for for my business coaching. You might know this feeling because you've responded to an invitation to join this seminar. And I'm guessing that the reason that you did that is because that you know you want to improve your email marketing. And there was something about the emails that I sent you that indicated that there might be some useful answers here. And I hope that's turning out to be the case. And so we're back to the highest state of readiness, prospects that are ready to buy. They've already decided that they need the product or service that you provide. And with this group, you can be as direct as you like. So that's just really a very brief introduction to the concept of six stages of readiness. Of course, there's a lot more to it than this, but this is all we've got time for today on this particular topic. So you might want to make a note of this and think about how you would apply it to your Uh, to your business to your prospects what stage of readiness are your prospects in how well do they know you or what you sell are all your prospects the same or are some more ready than others what could you say in each of the six categories to approach each stage of readiness differently those are a few things to think about uh, that, that might give you some ideas about how to write your email marketing campaigns differently by bearing in mind the state of readiness of your prospects Now, I've spoken a few times about your reader's problems, and in a future webinar, I'll explain how to get a really good understanding of what your reader's problems are, what keeps them awake at night, and what their hopes and fears and aspirations are, and how to understand the emotional triggers that cause them to buy something, and how to do this in a way that's absolutely related to your products and services. When you get that kind of clarity, writing good emails that people respond to becomes very easy indeed. Uh, this is this is quite a broad topic and it would cover several webinars uh, alone. So whilst we can only really scratch the surface today, let's nevertheless address the question of how to write compelling emails. In this final section, I'm going to show you how to write an email so that your readers keep reading all the way through to the very end. In fact, I'll show you how to make it really difficult for your reader to stop reading. Just before I move on to this, I'd like to share with you an exciting opportunity to go a bit more in depth into each of these techniques so that you can start creating highly successful and profitable email marketing campaigns quickly and easily. When you do that, you're gonna see your results improve dramatically. In fact, I'll guarantee that these techniques will bring you more profit. I appreciate that we're trying to get a lot into a short space of time today, and it's impossible to cover the subject in any great depth in the time that we've got available. If you're interested to know more about how to create email campaigns that bring in a reliable, predictable stream of good quality, pre-qualified leads for your business, you might be interested to know about my online course, Hyper Responsive Email Marketing. During this course, you'll discover 10 proven strategies for building a hyper-responsive prospect list so that every campaign you send leads to measurable profits. A systematic process to identify and target your ideal prospects. Everything that you do can then be orientated towards attracting your perfect customer. Six factors to better understand what's going on in your prospect's mind so that you understand at the very deepest level what would make your prospect want to do business with you. A tried and tested method to turn prospects into customers, get repeat business and develop advocates for your business who spontaneously recommend you to others. Five ways to overcome resistance in your prospect. When you master this, your products and services will become almost irresistible. 
12 infallible sources of good quality content. You'll never wonder what to write about again. 8 vital features of email design that will transform the results that you get without changing a word. How to design for mobile devices so that your emails perform outstandingly well whatever device they're viewed on. And this is something that's really important. It is the, going to be the biggest change in email marketing in 2013. The three main pieces of legislation that affect email marketing so that you can have peace of mind knowing that your campaigns are on the right side of the law. How to integrate your email marketing into seven other marketing methods to produce a coherent, coordinated marketing strategy. The six key performance indicators that measure whether or not your campaigns are as successful as they could be. When you know how to respond to these me measures, your campaign success will continue to improve over time and how to automate campaigns to reduce the time and effort required to generate profit through your emails. The course will be delivered as six fortnightly webinars and there will be downloadable worksheets, transcripts, recordings and Q&A sessions as well. This course will give you a massive advantage over your competitors. You'll never again have to worry about where your new business is coming from and you can relax knowing that you have a reliable and predictable stream of pre-qualified leads for your business. You'll discover how to use email to filter for the very best new customers your business could have. When you've completed this course, creating profitable email campaigns will become second nature to you and you'll never again be stuck for something to say and your writing will flow easily and naturally. Just think how much value this course could add to your business. Some of my clients make thousands of pounds month in, month out from their email campaigns and this course will show you how you could too. Imagine what a difference that would make to your revenue and profits. Just think about the value to you of a new customer, not just for the first sale, but for all the repeat business that comes from landing a loyal customer. Think about how much extra business you would get if you could encourage your existing customers to spend, say, 10% more with you than they already do. Think about how much you could save on your marketing if you knew that the new leads your email campaigns were bringing you were hot prospects, ready to buy and requiring very little in terms of additional activity before they're ready to make a purchase. How much could you save in print advertising, direct mail, networking meetings, exhibitions, telesales, face-to-face meetings if your new prospects had already decided that they want to work with you before you even speak to them? Now, how much would you be prepared to pay for a course that delivered that possibility, the possibility of easy future sales and an endless supply of top quality new customers for your business? Well, I'm not one for overcharging for something just because I know that it has a very high value to you. So the usual price for this course is three easy monthly payments of £199 or a one-off payment of 497 But if you sign up within 24 hours of this webinar, there's a special offer of three monthly payments of £149 or a single payment of £379. And this course comes with an unconditional 100% money back guarantee. When you complete the course and put the principles into action, if you don't make enough additional profit to get a return on your investment, I'll refund your money, no questions asked. But to be honest, I don't expect to have to give anybody their money back because for most businesses, you only need one extra customer to cover the cost of the course. And I'm pretty confident that you'll get many, many more than just one new customer. So what have you got to lose? If you want to sign up for this course, go to www.inboxincome.co.uk forward slash webinars. I'll give you that address again at the end of the webinar. And to give a further boost to your email campaigns, I've also got a free gift for you as a way to say thanks for coming today. But I'll tell you about that later. Let's get back to the main event. <clears throat> So back to how to write compelling emails. Most people write their emails very badly. There are many, many ways to get people to ignore or unsubscribe from your emails, but only a few ways to do it well. The important thing to remember is that you want to get your reader to take action of some sort. You're not trying to win any literary awards. The objective is not to write a brilliant piece of prose. It's to get the reader to do something. So the first question is, what do you want your reader to do? Everything that you write should be leading up to this action. So let's start with your subject line. Your subject line has only one function and that is to get your reader to open the email. The best subject lines identify the prospect, demonstrate the problem and the solution and focus on the emotion that will drive action. Think of the Audi drivers um, subject line that we came across earlier. There's the prospect, the emotion, the problem and the solution all in 17 words. Avoid trying to be clever or obscure with subject lines. Remember that people scan their email inboxes very, very quickly and make decisions about whether to open an email or delete it in fractions of a second. 
if they have to think about what your subject line means or what you're getting at, the chances are that they'll delete it rather than open it. Although the subject line's job is to get the reader to open your email, it should relate to the content of the email. Readers will feel cheated or confused if the content of the email doesn't match the subject line. You might get more people to open the email, but if they fail to act because they're confused, it defeats the object. Here's a few attention-grabbing words. <clears throat> Remember that the purpose here is to get people to open, read and act. So you may not like the words and the writing that does this, but which would you rather have? An email that you like that doesn't bring any results or an email that you don't like that brings you more profit? One of my clients recently said that he didn't like the subject line announcing an extraordinary new scheme to give your clients up to 78% tax relief. He preferred helping you tell your clients about this new 78% tax relief scheme. There's a very simple way to tell which of those subject lines is more effective and that's to split test. And what that means is that we ran two versions of the campaign on a sample of the prospect list to compare results. And the subject line with the announcing and extraordinary in it got 15% higher results. In another version of the campaign, we tried these variations. And this is SEIS is a, a type of investment uh, that um, the, the government have incentivized by offering very good tax release for it, 78p in the pound. So here's four different versions of the uh, subject line. And again, the winner was announcing an extraordinary new turnkey SEIS solution. And it beat my personal favorite was breakthrough SES solution, the fourth one there. Um, but the, the winner beat my personal favorite by 24%. So it just goes to show that, that sometimes it's quite unpredictable which subject line is going to do best. And 24% is quite a big difference in the open rate. If 24% more people open an email, that will, that will filter through to 24% higher, um, greater results and higher return on investment. So it's important to remember that it's not about what you like, it's about what people respond to. And that's often two different things. People often respond to things that if you ask them about it, they say that they don't like. Uh, so that's why the only way to be really sure is to split test. And split testing is something that I'll cover in a future webinar. Right, so you've got your reader to open your email. So what comes next? Well, the first sentence of your email, again, has only one job. And that is to get the reader to read the next sentence. The next sentence is there to get the reader to read the first paragraph. The first paragraph is there to get the reader to read the next paragraph and so on. So every sentence should be designed to lead on to the next until you get to the part where the reader is asked to take some action. That's what direct response marketing is about. The action could be clicking through to a landing page where they download something, say you know, a report or uh, some further information. It could be going to a sales page where they make a purchase. It could be reading a blog post to build your credibility with the prospect, or it could be uh, something offline like picking up the phone to you. What you're asking them to do will depend on the stage of readiness as we've covered before, but there should always be a call to action in your email. Here are three great methods to keep your reader reading. Teasers and cliffhangers, questions and storytelling. Questions demand answers and storytelling, as we saw in the six stages of readiness, is a very subtle way of con communicating your message. Teasers and cliffhangers are used all the time in soap operas. The objective is to get the viewer to tune in again next time, and they work very well. You can use them as what, just as well in your emails. Here's an example from the campaign that I just mentioned. This went out to independent financial advisors. So let's have a look at how it's written. Firstly, it's good to start with the sentence that your prospect can only agree with. In this case, the sentence says, as an IFA, you're no doubt keen to ensure that you provide the very best advice to your investor clients. Well, no IFA is going to disagree with that sentence. So the effect of this is that you get your reader agreeing with you right from the first line. Next, notice the function of the words read on in the next paragraph. It's an explicit instruction to continue reading, but it isn't at the end of the paragraph. The reader reads it in context and is motivated to continue. Uh, the, the paragraph ends by hinting at a new scheme or referring to a new scheme. Uh, and this is, a te this is what's meant by a teaser. The reader's mind can't help but wonder what this new scheme is. 
Next is a very conspicuous invitation to unsubscribe. This email went out to an opted in purchase list. So that's people who've opted in to receive uh, emails from third parties. But it meant that the people receiving it didn't know Seed Mentors, who's the client. Um, and so it's important to put an unsubscribe link in, in there because you don't want to continue emailing people who, who aren't interested in what you've got to offer, do you? So, and this is one of the skills in dealing with the purchase list. It avoids a lot of um, aggravation to have a very clear unsubscribe link. The next paragraph says, let me give you some background. And that's another incentive to continue reading. The next paragraph ends with a question. What's the best way to do that? The reader automatically wants to know the answer to the question. They can't help themselves but want to know what the answer to that is. The next two paragraphs emphasize the need for IFAs to know about everything. And they're implying that there is something that the IFA does not know about. By the time the question, so what alternatives are there, appears, the reader is pretty much hooked. And once again, the question demands an answer. Next comes some credibility for the scheme by quoting well-known investment experts, followed by the call to action, which in this case was to sign up for a free seminar. The emotive pull in this email comes from the phrase, you'd want them to hear about it from you rather than someone else, wouldn't you? The fear of loss is greater than the expectation of gain and any conscientious IFA should be terrified of the idea that one of her clients should find out about a new investment scheme from somebody else. Notice that this email is an invitation because these IFAs are already looking for solutions for their clients. They may not know Seed Mentors specifically, but they do know that there are new investment vehicles on the market and they're actively seeking them. So that's where they fit in the six stages of readiness. They're searching for answers. This campaign has been very successful and in two months has generated a potential £16 million of funding for the Seed Mentors Fund. Another important discipline with your writing is to keep it simple. Even highly literate readers need to be able to scan and read your email quickly and get the gist. <clears throat> it's also relevant to mention that around about 40% of the UK population have, the reading age, have a reading age of 11. And for that reason, your email should be readable by an 11 year old. So it's, uh, it's important to make your emails easy to read, uh, whether your readers are literate or not. And there's a website, here's a uh, link to a website where you can test that. And you should be aiming to score around seven or eight on the grade level, uh, which, which is, means that a year seven or a year eight could read it and get the flesh reading ease as high as possible. And it should be at least 60, the higher that um, figure it is, the easier it is to read. And finally, bear in mind that a lot of people won't read all of your email. They'll scan through it. So use headings, bold text, colours and many more paragraph breaks than you normally would. Finally, always include a PS. Research has shown that most people read the PS even if they don't read the whole of the email. So it's important to ensure that the PS contains the entire message and the call to action. Right, well, we're, we're coming up to the end of the time that we've got available today um, and the, the end of this webinar. In a moment, I'll tell you about a free gift that I'd like to give you so that you can continue improving your email campaigns. But first, here's a quick summary of what we've covered today. To start with, build your list. If you haven't got a list, start building one today. I'll give you my email address in a minute so I can be the first person on your list if you haven't already got one. Use third-party software to send your campaigns. Never send bulk emails from Outlook or any other standard email client. You'll get blacklisted and your emails won't get delivered or a high proportion of them won't get delivered. For those of you who haven't got a system yet, I'll tell you about the Belmont Mail system in a minute. There are six stages of readiness. Work out where your prospects are in these six stages and write to them accordingly. Use simple, compelling subject lines to grab your reader's attention and get them to open your email. Start with a statement that your reader has to agree with. Keep them reading with teasers, questions and stories. Remember that the fear of loss is greater than the expectation of gain. Don't shy away from telling your readers what they could miss out on. Use headings, bold type, colours and paragraph breaks for those who scan their emails and always include a PS. Aim for Year 7 readability scores and always include a clear, compelling call to action. Now, I appreciate that there's been a lot to take in during this webinar, so I want to let you know that there will be a recording available so you can watch it again if you think there's anything that you might have missed. 
uh, or if you just want to refresh on the subjects that we've covered. Also, if you haven't got an email marketing system yet, or if you'd like to uh, try out the Belmont Mail system to see how it compares with the system you're using currently, you can sign up for a trial account completely free of the Belmont Mail system at www.belmont.uk.com forward slash trial. Belmont clients get a very special service from me and if you become a Belmont client you'll be able to use the resources on inbox income either totally free or at heavily discounted rates. To give you an example of the sort of resources that are going to be available on inbox income I'm going to send you a free gift my ebook email rules so watch out for that in your inbox it normally sells on the website at 47 pounds plus VAT but I'll send you a voucher to get it absolutely free. It will give you some more insights into how to write compelling emails and I hope you'll find it really useful. So that's about it. Thanks very much for attending today and remember you can sign up for the more in-depth webinar series hyper-responsive email marketing at a reduced rate if you sign up within 24 hours. Here's the sign up page coming up on your screen now and here are my contact details too. Please feel free to call me or email me if you want to carry on chatting with me about your email marketing. I'd love to hear any success stories that come about as a result of you being on this webinar. So do get in touch. And also if you've got any questions or if there's anything that I've uh, talked about today that's not completely clear, uh, please feel free to email me or give me a ring. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. So that's it. Thanks very much indeed for your time today and good luck with your email campaigns. I wish you every success.